Welcome back to What Makes That Ticker Tick. Today is all about the Robo Global Robotics and Automation Index. The ticker is R-O-B-O. -O. I'm joined by none other than Zeno Mercer, Senior Research Analyst here at Vetify, someone who knows the Robo ticker R-O-B-O -O, like the back of his hand. Zeno, this is a special show because we're also celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the index, quite the milestone for any index. Um, I got one question for you to start. What was the premise of Robo then versus now? Yeah, so the premise 10 years ago when, when the index was created was that no one had mapped out robotics and let alone the robotics subsectors that comprise the universe of robotics. It was basically just looked at the subset of manufacturing and industrial automation. No one had taken a chance to, to break it down or let alone create an index out of it, even though robotics had been deployed uh, in Japan going back to 1967. So that was the premise then was that 10 years ago, this needed to happen. And a bunch of industry experts and leading um, and many of our existing strategic advisors uh, gathered around and decided that this should be a thing. And, and sure enough, 10 years later, here we are. <laughs> sure enough, sure enough. Um, I feel like this is going to be an episode that's one part science fiction, one part indexing. Um, today, when you look at the index, it's it really follows this kind of duality in classification. On one side, you see the enabling technologies, those that are representing the companies that are going into the robotics and automation. And then on the other side, you see technologies that fall under the classification of application. Um, the enabling technologies, last I looked, I was checking out the fact sheet earlier today, it's 41% of the portfolio. Zeno, can you tell me about some of the companies that fall under, you know, uh, technologies enabling robotics and, and automation? Sure. Uh, kind of referencing the screen we just had up, um, within the enabling technologies, I mean, these are core components that enable robots to exist. You've got actuation, which is effectively the movement and motion and controls of robotics. You have sensing which is how do they process and interact with the world? Are there you know, computer vision and other enabling technologies there of uh, sensing? Then you also have, for example, the compute in AI element, which um, you know, is in growingly uh, top of mind for many people. And this is how does it connect and think and process information, not just on its own device, but how does it you know, connect with the rest of the world? Huge and important elements, especially as we see robotics expand out of manufacturing and warehouse automation into more real world outside of outside the box elements there. Um, so yeah, we, we've definitely seen over the years, uh, more and more companies come into the fray. LIDAR wasn't really as much of a thing. So we've got, you know, we're constantly monitoring and tracking the, these enabling technologies and how they, they impact the world um, and specifically play through and pull through into the demand drivers of robotics. And those companies, are supporting those on the other side of the portfolio, which you know makes up the remainder of it, and that that side's pretty interesting too, because you know you see a lot of like everyday topics in their food and agriculture, healthcare, um, manufacturing. Zeno within the application side of of the index, fourteen percent of the index is in logistics automation. Like, what are some of those companies, and how have you seen those companies evolve over the last ten years? Sure. Over, over the last 10 years, uh, we've seen growing importance of logistics automation. Um, effectively, we saw even during COVID, uh, lots of supply chain elements and disruption due to not having labor there mm -hmm. and, and missing links. And we see companies like Symbotic that, that helps bring in millions of SKUs in the Walmarts using process automation in these you know, very autonomous uh, warehouse areas. Um, and they're going into basically every single a regional Walmart distribution center in the U.S. It's it's actually outperforming NVIDIA this year. That's symbolic. Uh, but wow. you also see other players like Zebra um, Technologies. Uh, you see Toyota Industries and Manhattan Associates and, and many other players that work along the stack across a number of different industries globally. Uh, also in that part of the portfolio, 17% of the index is in manufacturing and industrial automation. Tell, tell us about that segment of companies and how it's evolved, you know, 10 years ago from when the index first started versus today. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd highlight that part of the origin story of Robo goes back to what is now known as Amazon Robotics. Um, uh, one of the co-founders was involved there. And, um, you know, now Amazon has 750,000 robots deployed. That was a number they recently put out. Another member, um, Fanuc, 
uh, recently celebrated its millionth robot milestone. And so these are robots being used for everything such as, you know, cars and iPhones, basically anything that you enjoy. And in, in from a technical angle, like these robots have massive uh, elements and, and uh, components of uh, the world really runs on robotics now, even though that most of them operate behind the scenes in manufacturing. And, and of course, that is still one of the biggest components in areas of robotics. Whether that's the same 10 years from now, that's, you know, to be decided over what happens over the next 10 years. What, one million. It's, it's, it's incredible. Zeno, I know you're you're out in the Vetify East studio there in New York City. I'm in the Vetify West studio here just outside of San Francisco. Um, I recently read that there's almost 100 um, driverless cars now in San Francisco, picking people up, taking them to their destination. Um, what are your thoughts on that movement and where where would those companies fall into the categories that we have within the robo index? Yeah, look, we're seeing robot or uh, autonomous vehicles start to get deployed uh, in more than just SF. They're all over the U.S. now. Basically, in principle, they're getting deployed in Texas and, and Tennessee and many other spots, um, not only just for intracity, but also across you know longer haul distances, also Japan. China, rest of the world. And, and really, you know, it's a very interesting point you bring up because, um, you know, autonomous electric vehicles or, or just autonomous vehicles are made by robots. Their components are bots and they themselves are a form of a robot. They have sensors, they have batteries. I mean, in many ways, they, they are just a mobile robot. And you actually see lots of similar parallels with uh, the concept known as autonomous mobile robots that are used in warehouses to move goods across the floor. Mm. But increasingly, it requires uh, elements from almost every technological advance we've had over the last, you know, I guess, humanity, uh, where, you know, it needs robust energy and connectivity and autonomy and, and decision making that you know, a lot of this is trained on the back end with understanding of physics engines and, you know, societal rules. Um, and we're really having a chance to reinvent that and, and have a chance to improve that. So you've got robotics being used to make these. And they're implemented inside of it, and they are robots. So it's a great example of a um, you know very early stage in the grand scheme of things deployment of robotics. Like I said, this show is feeling one part science fiction. You're absolutely right. Today, so many of the cars that people are driving are made by robots, and now you're seeing in so many cities across the U.S. robots driving the cars or automation driving the cars. It's, it's phenomenal. Zeno, thank you for coming back on to what makes that ticker tick. It was all about Robo, the Robo Global Robotics and Automation Index. Um, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary today of the index. What do you think is on the horizon for the next 10 years for this, this index? I would say that a lot of people are seriously and for good reason looking at artificial intelligence and its impact on society. I don't think a lot of people have kind of taken that second degree of order of what happens to robotics um, when we improve energy efficiency, both the input and output. We're improving their training. Um, you don't just train a single robot. You can train entire fleets. You can push an update out. So what we're seeing is the impact of generative AI, I don't think has been fully appreciated to how much it'll impact the utility and benefit of robots, um, the form factors and the, and the value that we see. So I really think we will see robots increasingly, not only of course be used in the traditional sense, but we'll start to see them more deployed in other form factors such as multimodal logistics with cars and drones and other form factors, uh, providing better utility, uh, better bang for the bot, if you will. But- um, I was going to say, it sounds like an inc incredible, interesting space to watch, especially when you think about the underlying enabling technologies supporting robotics and automation. Absolutely. The the increasing addressable markets that uh, these technologies are providing obviously get pulled through as part of the demand curve uh, as it shifts forward. Very cool. Zeno, thank you again for joining us on What Makes That Tick or Tick. I'm going to have you back on in another month or so. I love learning more about robotics and automation. Thank you again.